Today we're talking about cheap upgrades that will have home buyers fighting over your home. Or maybe this is for you who have bought a home. You don't quite love it. It's maybe more the builder grade. And what can you do to make it be a home that you love that says this is uniquely you without breaking the bank? That's what we're talking about today. I will see you on the other side. If you're putting your home on the market today, especially if your home happens to be in a large community where there are a lot of builder grade homes, or maybe the same house has been built hundreds of times just with a different elevation, what do you do to make your house stand out? What do you do without breaking the bank to make your house stand up as something that's a very high quality and something that people uniquely want to say, this is my house. Now, how do I know what it is that people want? Probably the same thing you do. We're searching Instagram. I see people hundreds of times a week in showing homes because I'm a licensed realtor here in the Nashville, Tennessee area. I have been for 35 years. I'm also a licensed contractor, now retired, but I hear all the time about what people want. What's hot? What's no longer hot? What is it the things that people see when they go in a home with me? I'm showing a home. I'm listening always to what it is they like. They like the things that make a home uniquely unique and in a good way not in the cat hair smell way or whatever you know in a really good unique way what makes it feel really quality and those things you can do to your home or maybe add to your builder grade home or do before you put your home on the market that's not going to break the bank and is going to make your home stand out in front of all the rest those are the things we're going to talk about today so i'm not even going to start with the things that i know you know which is declutter we all talk about that it is get the things out of your home it's to get things in good shape that obviously is need shape right if you've got a hole in your roof you need to repair that roof and that may break the bank because roofs are not cheap but maybe you had an old leak in the past and you didn't pay attention to getting the inside maybe painted that ceiling painted we're going to talk about paint paint goes a long way and it's not just for walls and ceilings almost anything can be painted so let's talk about it. let's assume we have maybe a builder grade home or maybe you're looking at a home that is already kind of builder grade and it just doesn't have any special feelings let's talk about some things that you can do with paint to really make that home your own now i know there are some people who hate painting kitchen cabinets Kitchen cabinets are expensive. Maybe you have the old oak cabinets or maybe you've just got the flat builder gray cabinets and you want a little bit more pizzazz. Many people today are liking the look of the two-toned kitchen. Maybe the lower base cabinets are painted a warm, deep, rich green, the Bellmead green, or um, one of the ones that I love is called Urban Bronze. It's a warm earth tone. Earth tones are really what people are looking for today. We're out of the cold, 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 white, cold grays. Look at Instagram. Look at the pictures you're liking. Gravitate toward the things you see. Maybe even hold on a pin board 20, 30 homes that you like. You're going to start seeing some of the things that you like, and I'll really be willing to bet that you're going to recognize some in the pictures that I show you. So back to that kitchen. Kitchen, two-tone cabinets. Maybe you've got an all-white kitchen and it's feeling a little sterile. Paint the lower cabinets. Maybe what you want to do is paint the lower cabinets, paint the uppers a creamy, warm white. If you're looking for whites, I've got a great idea of, you can buy a fan deck of whites and there are about 20 to 30 of them. They peel off of the backing. You can put it up and you can see what it looks like. Whites look very different in different light. It looks very different depending on the color of the light bulbs that are above it. We'll talk about those things. What about bathroom vanities? You can really freshen up a bathroom in just painting the cabinetry in that bathroom. You can also, if you have maybe the flat mirror walls, just the big plate glass walls, why not buy framing lumber, miter the corners, paint out, and it looks like it's a framed mirror. You can do a lot in a bathroom. How about painting the interior and exterior doors? That really freshens up a house tremendously. Maybe you've got an all white house because you bought it not long ago and that was what people liked and they still do. We're still liking to put character, but character in texture and feeling. How about painting the baseboard? Maybe you have a very thin baseboard that just doesn't feel very beefy, or maybe it's just the one by fours that some uh, builders were using. Get the baseboard, add a cap, add a trim cap to it. Paint it all out. You can make it feel beefier. If you want it even more so, then skip an inch or so and then add it right above that. Paint out the whole thing. And that whole baseboard and the trim is going to look a lot more quality. How many times have you seen an older home in the 50s, 60s, 
home where there's a lot of built-in cabinetry. We, people are kind of getting away from that because it tends to be the dark oak or maybe it's a color you don't like. How about this? Why not paint that cabinetry? It's expensive. It's not easy to do. Maybe you want to melt, build less of them and maybe kind of shorten it in the room, but around a fireplace. How about painting that a contrasting color to really have it pop, a rich color to give it some depth and character? How about painting those cabinetry? What about, and some people, I'm going to get a lot of flack here. I've done it several times. I've loved it each time I've done it, but a lot of people hate this, painting the fireplace. Now, again, back to those 50s, 60s homes, they have often have a really big fireplace and lots of brick. And that can really feel like a dark hole in an otherwise really nice room. What about painting it? You can whitewash it, which is not hard, or you can to give some of the character of the brick and the texture of the brick to come through or paint it completely. Now, painting completely is not something that's an easy thing to do. Paint really drinks up, sucks up that paint, but it really can look really nice. Oftentimes, if it had a brick, it had a really light wood on top. What about if you're painting out the brick, then maybe you want to stain the mantelpiece. Maybe you want to beef up that mantelpiece. Go to an old lumber yard and find a really bigger chunk of mantel and have that installed. Now, that's not a DIY thing. Everything else I've mentioned easily could be a DIY thing. Back to that brick. People hate painted brick or they love it. I recently painted a home exterior and truly they don't like it because they say, why well, maintain it? It eats up the mortar. Well, there's lots of ways now of doing it such that you don't have the thickness and the paint does not eat up the border. It's a lime wash. There are lots of techniques. Look into it if you want to. If you happen to have a home that I've just finished up doing where it was built and added onto over a period of, of 30 years, each time it was added onto, it had a different color brick. It had a different texture brick. It just didn't quite work, but painting it gave it some cohesiveness that was amazing. And then if you still want to add on to it, they added a piece of uh, an area that's going to have that clabbered. You can paint the clabbered. So although it's different textures and different materials, the paint gives it a cohesiveness that really is very satisfying. So I don't know. Tell me, what do you think? Are you a painted brick hater or a painted brick lover? I guess it goes that way. Which way is it? Something else you can do to not break the bank is you can actually paint hardware. Now, back when that long ago, the things that everybody put in or the builder grade that everybody was putting in 80s, 90s, early 2000s was a really shiny, brassy, lacquered brass that was, it's just not ugly. It looks cheap. It feels cheap in your hand. You can't change the way it feels, but you can take that hardware off and spray paint. There's some good lacquers that you can spray paint it, put it right back on just to give it a little, little brighter feel. Maybe you're an oil rubbed bronze ORB fan. You can take off the hardware. You can do the very same thing with lighting fixtures. Maybe you don't have the money to buy new fixtures, but you certainly can take them down, repaint it, spray paint it, and put it right back up. You can actually have a, you know, a totally different look with just a big can of spray paint. And while you're at it, be sure to check ceilings. I tell you, when people replace lighting fixtures, they often don't replace it with the same size that has a bracket on the ceiling, and you can see where a fixture has been taken down or telltale signs of leaking. So maybe you did have a leak in the past. Maybe that roof is brand new or it's been taken care of, but you've got to take care of the telltale remnants of that too. So be sure to paint. One of the hot things now to do as far as paint goes is painting those ceilings. You've got four walls. Don't forget that other surface, which is the ceiling. Many people are look liking to paint the walls one color, the trim a different color with a different finish, and then the ceiling the very same color as the walls. Still going to have a different effect because something painted that way and something that you see that way is still going to look very different, but it envelops you in the color. So again, just think about it. Those ceilings are a space you can't forget. So painting, you can paint anything, not just walls. Make sure all the paint is fresh. Make sure with a magic eraser, that really takes care of a lot of damage around switch plates and places where there are sticky fingers. But if you can't do that, then be sure to get a fresh coat of paint everywhere. I've seen and heard that it gets anywhere from 110 to 140% ROI on just that attention to those details. That's paint, that is elbow grease. And if you ever need some help, one of the people that I've found is really good uh, it, it, it's hard to find a handyman. It's hard to find a really good handyman. 
I've gone to TaskRabbit. If you're on this side of the country, there's a company called TaskRabbit. And you can put in, and I get nothing for telling you about this, but you can go to TaskRabbit, put in what you want. Maybe you want some light plumbing. Maybe you want some heavy mirrors hung. Maybe you want some painting done. And then it will give you a lot of names of people. It gives you their ratings. You can talk to them to find out what they do. And typically you can get them a lot faster. And someone who's professional in that, uh, much faster than if you wait for two or three of my top handymen because they're just so, so busy. So check into TaskRabbit if you happen to have a pretty lengthy uh, honeydew list and can't find somebody to take care of it, I think you'll be very, very pleased. So I'm not just a realtor who helps people buy and sell homes. These are the things that I've done myself. My very first home was a 20s home that I bought over in the central Richland area here in Nashville, Tennessee. We had to redo bathrooms, we had to redo kitchens. We did a lot of things to that great house. I truly loved it. Old house, as you can imagine. At that time, it was about 70 years old. The next house I had was a 50s house. We did a great job of making it our own. Pretty much doing every single thing I've told you about on this list. One more thing we did do, we were fortunate it had horrible, horrible carpet, green shag. It was awful. We were able to find that there was hardwood floors under that carpet. Now you never know for a certainty what the condition of that hardwood floor might be, but if you're lucky enough to have hardwood floors in your older home that have been covered up, you might find that they're beautiful. You might find that they've got old dog and cat pee on them. I've seen both. I truly still would rather have hardwood floors than carpet. So if you're lucky enough to find that you have hardwood floors under there, even if you can't quite now afford to refinish it, clean them. The warmth, the mellowness, the character, I don't know. I'd rather have exposed hardwood floors that are not in great condition. If I had the money, I'm certainly gonna refinish them. But the way you can check and see whether you have hardwood floors, pick up the registers and you're gonna see different layers. You're gonna see the carpet, you're gonna see the padding of the carpet, and it probably is gonna smell bad. Then you're gonna see the hardwood floor layer, then you're gonna see the subflooring layer. By looking at those layers, you can tell whether you've truly got hardwood floors under there. If you do, hold your breath, pull up that carpet, and I bet you'll be really, really happy you did. And I know that your buyers are gonna be happy that there are hardwood floors there. It's just a sign of quality and a better build that often you're not getting in new homes today. Hey, if you're liking these tips, I can't give you all my tips in one place, in one video. You would be bored out of your mind. I do have a guide that I call Prep for Profit. Now, whether you're looking to sell your home in six weeks or six years from now, why not do the things that are gonna make you love, love, love your home? Do it as you can afford to, do it over time, and don't, I cannot tell you how many times I've had someone say, I've been wanting to do all these things or I didn't realize how much I had to do these things. Now I love my house, I'm not even sure I wanna sell it. It feels so right. So don't wait, enjoy your home. Do these things incrementally as time goes on and I know you're gonna love your home. It's also going to be better maintained. So grab that Prep for Profit guide and keep it for resources, I've got paint ideas, I've got you know, uh, what the return might be on some of the things that you wanna do with your home, which homes you shouldn't do renovations to, which ones you should, all kinds of great information in that guide. How about adding a little bit more character, a little bit more pizzazz, a little more you to your home? And these are upgrades that if a builder is gonna do it, they're gonna charge you an arm and a leg for. Let's add a little more customization to your home. Very simple to do. We talked about how to beef up your baseboard or beef up moldings around your doors with maybe a back band. But what about adding more detailing? What about adding some paneling? It's not hard to do. You can either go to Home Depot and get some wood strip moldings and do your own designs, maybe around a dining room maybe around in your front entry hall with the beadboard and a cap. Same in, in a mudroom area. Lots of things you can do and design. Don't go crazy, don't go crazy. A lot of measuring, measure what? Measure three times and cut only once. But um, that's very easy to do. The application is not hard with trim nails. And then pop and you paint it out. A little elbow grease will save you a lot of money, will really dress up your home and make it be something that stays top of mind to your buyers when they're looking at your home or just make you love your home even more. So we've painted all the areas that you can think of. We've added some character with the moldings. Let's not overlook some of the really glaring things that say this is an older house and it's kind of not maintained very well. Take a look. The old 
thermostats. They're typically kind of yellowed anyway, which is different from the coloring that you're using. They stick out like a sore thumb. People want more of the updated thermostats. You're also losing money on energy. Do that little thing. Change out the electrical outlet covers. Simple, easy to change. Anybody can do that. Change out those colors to match closer to your wall color, the white, the fresher white. Or you can get the paintable kind and paint it the very same color as the walls. These little things say these people have maintained this home they've they've updated it it's 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 like having you know a beautiful woman in a 90 year old dress and frumpy looking it can be a fabulous house very well maintained but if you don't update some of the things that make it a little more modern nobody's going to see the rest of what you did i recently sold a home closed over a million dollars because it's in a phenomenal area and i know it stayed on the market longer because it had the old old um, thermostats it had old ceiling vents that were still that were kind of yellowed it had very heavy drapes um, that didn't let in the light so much you can do that most people most buyers do not actually see they see in their mind what they want in instagram they don't see how that house can translate to being something wonderful like that so these tips will all help you without spending a lot of money create the vision that your buyers all want something else that's very simple to change out is old dated faucets the fixtures in your bathrooms sometimes they just get grody uh, there's no other way to describe it you can't get it clean if you can't get everything fresh and clean looking like you're walking into a freshly cleaned up hotel room then it needs to be changed if you have a single whole faucet in your bathroom but you can't get that cleaned around the the metal is looking tarnished because it really isn't heavy good metals anyway very simple to change that out if you have a one hole then go find something that has a one hole those things are very simple to change out your kitchen cabinetry if you don't want to paint them they look fine maybe update them with different hardware you've heard it many times before if you have a knob with one hole in it replace it with a knob with one hole so you don't get into drilling holes and you don't get into having to fill the holes with wood filler and paint make it life easy on yourself but it's super easy with the internet now to find all that you might need to update easily on a shoestring okay here's the last tip and and i know you know this you've heard it and it just seems like ah oh, anybody can overlook this shouldn't be a problem at all boob lights get rid of them everybody hates them everybody's hated them for 30 years they're in every builder grade home you walk to the mudroom area before you get to the garage there's a boob light front entry if there's a small entry hall look up it's a boob light they're terrible nobody likes them and they are super easy to get rid of Take the darn thing down, go give it to Habitat for Humanity, and you know, maybe somebody's gonna want it, who knows? Get rid of those things. It's very simple to find the flush mount. Home Depot, go on the internet. Wayfair has good ones. Ikea has good ones. Get fresh, updated, and if you don't really know, again, ask, ask your realtor, what do people want right now? Go to Instagram, look and see. If, if somebody's putting up pictures and they have one or two likes, don't get that. If they have hundreds of likes, then that's what your buyer's seeing. That's what your buyer likes. Mimic it. Just copy what they like, put that in your home, and you are not going to break the budget. You are going to update your home well. You are going to sell it quickly, and hopefully people are going to fight over your home because of the elbow grease. The 30 days of hard work that you put into selling it and getting things right is going to pay you back fivefold. So whether you're working with me or anybody else, please share this with them. Share my prep for profit. Go ahead and grab that. If you're moving to the Nashville area and you're thinking, okay, I, I need to find this, but my budget isn't gonna allow me to find all the house that I want. Look, this is a great time right now. There are a lot of builders who do have a couple inventory homes left. They're giving great deals to do three, two, one buy downs or uh, move in in 30 day kind of deals. We can make that house your own if it isn't quite there yet, but it certainly is in your budget. It's certainly in your time frame. And if you can save a lot of money on that, we can make that house your own. Use some of these tips and love your home or love the money that you get walking away with your home. Either way, hopefully you enjoyed these tips. Hopefully I'll be back in my normal place because we're on the road and this is, this is an exercise room. So yeah, looks great. That's me. <laughs> See you next week.